Have you heard of the literal standard version Bible? That's what we're looking at in this video. Hello, my name's Stephen and this is Faith Ministries. Today we're looking at the literal standard version Bible, the LSV Bible. Not to be confused with the Bible we had to look at a little while ago called the Legacy Standard Version. This is called the Literal Standard Version Bible. And it was published about two years ago in 2020. So what is so special about the Literal Standard Version Bible? Let's have a look. So this is the webpage for the Literal Standard Version Bible, lsvbible.com. And as you can see here, they've got a strolling thing which says translation faithful to the original languages and uh, of beauty, elegance and accuracy. So as we scroll down, we see that they have some information here on the left. Uh, they say that 2 billion of the world's 7.6 billion people in speak English. 73 out of 83 English Bible translations are in modern English. 61% of American Bible readers prefer a word for word translation, which is very interesting. And 55% of American Bible readers use the 400 year old King James Version. Also, they say though that 24%, only 24% of Americans believe that the Bible is the literal word of God, which is, it's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame that they only think that many. Only five out of 83 complete English translations are actually literal, only five of them. And it says here that zero translations are strictly literal in modern English until now. And they're saying that they are strictly, strictly literal and in modern English. So they call themselves a literal standard version, a modern literal word for word with formal equivalence English translation in the Holy Scriptures. It's elegant, easy to read, with significant improvements over previous literal translations, including Robert Young's excellent Young's literal translation. Now, if you've never looked at Robert Young's literal translation, you'll be very surprised. It is very literal in what it, how it reads, but it is very hard to read because it is disjointed as they try to take the, um, the Hebrew and the Greek and make it exactly as it's supposed to be. And also they have here an accurate translation, pre preserving the verb tenses and the consistent use of words wherever possible. The uh, LSV also looks at accurately transliterating the proper name of God, uh, Yahweh, from the Tetragrammaton, and rather than just using the word God or Lord, uh, they prefer to use the original Hebrew, Yahweh. It is justified alignment, which is very typical of the Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek um, types of language. And they also use the uh, Caesura mark, forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, which is an ancient mark that is, is makes for uh, poetry and makes it for uh, breaking down poetry for ease of, of reading. And all the way through the Bible, they're also capitalizing pronouns and other now, noun forms used for God, for Christ, the Holy Spirit. And in this Bible, it's interesting to actually count them. There's 780,787 words. There are 66 books, 1,189 chapters, and there are 31,102 verses. And from what I can tell, there are no verses like some of the newer Bibles these days, which they have, they leave out verses and they'll put a footnote saying that this wasn't found in a, you know, in an older version of the Bible, uh, translation but the uh, lsv literal standard version it leaves all the verses in there so let's just have a look at the preface and you can take your own time to actually read through this because it talks about translating from hebrew and aramaic and greek and the the difficulties of of translating the old languages into english because of the different idioms because of the different expressions at the time uh, people had different ways of sharing their thoughts, and uh, it's hard for believe translators to actually put that into, into modern English, especially if you didn't understand the culture at the time. 
So what are the distinctive features of the literal standard version of the Holy Bible? Number one, it says that it's a modern literal word for word, formal equivalence, as we said before, English translation of the Holy Scriptures, using English word rearrangement when necessity for readability. It is the most literal translation of the Holy Bible. That's quite a claim to make, the most literal translation of the Holy Bible since Robert Young's literal translation. They are, wherever possible, they're preserving the verb tenses. And as I said a moment ago, they're using the transliteration of the tetragrammaton in the Old Testament, all uppercase Lord used in the New Testament with reference to Yahweh is likely. There's generally a consistent approach to formal equivalence translation. Most English translations use a broad set of words when translating a single Greek or Hebrew word based on context, but they are striving to only use varying words when the context demands it. They are also removing many of the Hebrew and Greek transliterations, uh, which are not necessarily generally not translations. Also, they say here that unlike most translations, justified topographic alignment consistent with the style of the original Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek biblical autographs. And the ancient caesura mark is used for easy readability of poetic literature, such as the Psalms, which we'll see in a moment. They've also had inclusion of verses found in the older English translations, such as the King James Version, that are not found in many of the modern translations. And also including the alternate, uh, the LXX Genesis chronology set next to the MT. And finally, they're capitalizing pronouns and other noun forms uh, when referring to God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. References to the messengers of the Lord are also capitalized when the subject appears to be a clear reference to God or the Messiah, as found in the, such as the New King James Version. So we can have a look at the actual reader. And here we're looking at Psalm 23, and I'll read it through, and you can follow along. And as you can see here, we've got two double vertical lines and that's your caesura that's where you pause and is sort of like a break in the poetry so psalm 23 a psalm of david yahweh is my shepherd i do not lack he causes me to lie down in pastures of tender grass he leads me by quiet waters he refreshes my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake, also when I walk in the valley of the shadow, death shadow, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You arrange your table before me, in front of my adversaries. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup is full. Surely goodness and mercy pursue me all the days of my life. And my dwelling is in the house of Yahweh for the length of my days. It's quite a, it's quite a uh, easy read and it is quite poetic, quite easy to read, as you can see there. Uh, to read another chapter, another book in the Bible, we go here to the top where it says the actual books. You click on it and you can scroll up and you can see if you can go to Genesis, for example, Genesis chapter one. And it pops up. And it reads, we'll just read a couple of verses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was formless and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was fluttering on the face of the waters. And God says, let light be and light is. And God sees that the light is good. And God separates between the light and the darkness. And God calls the light day and the darkness he has called night. And there is an evening and there is a morning the first day. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what it sounds like there in the beginning of Genesis. If we go to Deuteronomy, which is an interesting one I found earlier, when I was looking at them, chapter 28, which is a breakdown of the, the blessing that God gave to Israel. It's interesting, the, 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 um, the verbs that they use here. Let's just read this for a moment. Chapter 28, and it has been, if you listen diligently to the voice of your God, Yahweh, to observe, to do all his commands, which I am commanding you today, 
that your God, Yahweh, has made you highest above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings have come on you. That's interesting, isn't it? Not shall come upon you, but have come upon you and overtaken you because you listen to the voice of your God, Yahweh. Blessed are you in the city and blessed are you in the field, etc. King James and many other versions, they talk about blessed shall you be in the city or blessed shall you be in the field. But I like that. It is giving, it is a good positive confession that blessed are you in the city. I am blessed in the city. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. I like that. That's good. So it, it reads quite well. Let's just slip over then finally to another New Testament scripture. Say, so let's like Revelations chapter one. Revelation chapter one. A revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave to him to show to his servants what things must quickly come to pass. And he signified it, having set through his messenger to his servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, as many things as he also saw. Blessed is he who is reading and those hearing the words of prophecy and keeping the things written in it. For the time is near. So as you can see, it's an easy read. And it is without actually knowing Greek and Hebrew to read like other experts do. It seems to, uh, to bring out uh, quite a bit of detail. Very similar to the, uh, the Legacy Standard Version Bible. And also some of the other literal ones. But it just pre it, pre um, it presents it in a in a slightly different format. So the actual version, this uh, literal standard version Bible, it was translated by Covenant Press and also published by them. And um, as you can see from just looking at it, it appears to be quite a, an easy Bible to read, uh, one that flows easily and uh, good for personal Bible study, but also I believe you could use it in a, um, in a group setting, perhaps even in church, in giving messages, etc. If you are looking to buy the Bible um, here in Australia, for example, at amazon.com.au, they do have a paperback. I know in America they do have hardbacks. So they've got the Holy Bible literal translation and they go through much of this information that I already gave you. But you can pick up a copy of the paperback Bible for 1949, plus postage. So that was the literal standard version Bible. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed going through the Bible, through looking at the various verses, the history of it, and how it presents itself. I believe it'd be an, a, a valuable addition to anybody's library, to anybody's study books. Um, I like the way in which it is very literal in how it has translated the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and um, in comparison to the uh, thought for third thought Bibles that we see today and also the paraphrases. So you can go to Amazon and buy yourself a version or any good Christian bookshops out there. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share with your friends so more people may see it. And until next time, God bless.